Hi everyone and I hope you're enjoying the event so far. This session we are joined by Boot Cochrane who is part of Newcastle United who is actually the, the women's captain. Um, so hi Brooke and how are you doing today? Hi I'm great thank you. Excellent thanks so much for joining it's great obviously to have you as part of the event. Um, I know I'm, I'm definitely looking forward to sort of find out a bit more about how you got in the position you sort of in today and, and all the work that you're doing at the minute. Are you all right just to start off by sort of telling us a little bit about yourself and the kind of work you're up to at the moment? Yeah, of course. Um, so I'm 28. Um, I'm a sport development officer for Sunderland University, as well as playing for Newcastle United Women. Um, I started playing football when I was around 11 um, and I played for a grassroots club called Blythe Town until I was around 14. And then I got into Newcastle United Centre of Excellence. So at the time it was the Centre of Excellence. Now it's more of a player development centre or a regional town centre if you're at um, Sunderland or Durham. Um, from then I broke into the women's first team and then I played for the reserves until I was around 18. And then I left for about, I think it was for about five years and I went and played for a lot more local club, Whitney Bay. Um, and then I got asked to go back to Newcastle and trial for them again, like halfway through my last season for Whitney Bay. But I stayed with them until the end of the season. And then I went to Newcastle and this is my fifth season back at Newcastle now. Um, halfway through my first season being back at Newcastle, I got asked to be captain. Um, so that was a big leap up for us, especially for being back my first season again. Um, and yeah, I've been there ever since, really. Oh, brilliant. It sounds like sort of quite a journey that you've been on then. Um, one of my questions actually was going to be sort of what was your journey into, to semi-professional? I know you've kind of mentioned that you started at Bly, then you've been sort of Whitley Bay um, and then kind of back to, to Newcastle now, which is excellent. Did you sort of face any challenges kind of along the way? Um, yeah, so a big one was when I went, I went to college. Um, so that was when I was at Newcastle. So I just finished in the Centre of Excellence. And it was like quite a big step up into the like in the first team kind of football, women's football, um, going from like junior kind of football. And I also went to, I was going to college at the same time. So it was kind of like trying to balance like my lifestyle as well as playing football and trying to work out what I wanted and where I wanted to go with my life. Um, and I kind of fell out of love a little bit with football, um, which is why I kind of took a step back from Newcastle. Um, and it was kind of like, for me, I, I took a, a big step back to take two big steps forward mm -hmm. because then I went to Whitley Bay and I played there for five seasons and I fell in love with football again. Um, and I wouldn't say that, like, I, I suffered in the sense of, like, I didn't know what I wanted and I was struggling mentally or anything like that. At the time, I just, I wasn't really sure where I wanted to go. And I think when you're younger as well, like, you like you like the thought of the lifestyle and I was like, all these new people and I wanted to go and do new things and stuff like that. But then I... I realised my heart was with football um, and that that was just simply from taking a step back and realising how much I still love playing. Um, and then obviously being at football now, the last two years I've torn my ACL. So that's probably been like the biggest um, like barrier that I've faced in the sense of when I've done that, like a lot of everything else kind of came tumbling down in the sense of like I had to deal with so many different things at the same time. So that's the biggest hurdle that I've faced is probably tearing me ACL. Yeah, I imagine. And obviously you kind of just got back to that point of, of being back in love with football and playing again. Um, I imagine that that was quite a big challenge then. Do you have kind of any advice for any young people who might be experiencing sort of injuries at the minute and kind of struggling being out of sport? I know it's kind of, it's definitely a big concern for everyone, isn't it? Going back after lockdown when they've had such a long time out. Um, and I know a lot of young people have kind of suffered injuries already. Do you have kind of any advice for anyone who might be struggling with that? Um, yeah, just keep going. Keep believing in yourself. Um, like all these thing, things in life happen, like they test us, isn't it? So I think like when you, when you have an injury, I know it feels like the worst thing in the world. And you're like, oh God, I'm never going to get over it. Like I've just got back to football. And like I coach a few young, like young girls, like eights and nines, and two of them have got injured just simply from the fact that they've not played for so long, gone back playing, had all of this game time and that they've, they've hurt themselves. And that's not through anyone's fault, just the fact of like your body's not used to playing again. Mm -hmm. um, but it's just a process and there's always going to be an end goal. There's always a light at the end of the tunnel. And if you work hard and you put the effort in, and you look after yourself, like physically and mentally, because you meant like your mental health is just as important as your physical health. You'll definitely get there. So I know it's a battle, but these things are sent to test us. So keep pushing and just keep going. 
Oh, brilliant. I think that's some excellent advice. Um, and just on that note, obviously, we know you do a lot of work with sort of the Be Game Changer campaign. Are you all right just to tell us a little bit about kind of what the, the Be Game Changer campaign is? Yeah, definitely. So Be Game Changer, uh, Changer campaign is like it encourages football fans to openly talk about mental health in a if like an environment where they feel comfortable and um, whether there's no judgment or anything like that um, and it's whether like it's speaking about your own mental health or about people that you know who's faced mental health whether it's with a loved one or with a professional um, or your friends like and it's it's just about being comfortable and knowing that there's people that are out there that actually care um, and that you don't have to kind of put something into a box and put it in the back of a room because there's people here that want to have a conversation with you and want to talk to you about it and want you to know that it's, it's actually okay sometimes not to be okay mm -hmm. and like in the northeast as well there's like quite a lot um high statistics on um suicide so a big game changer campaigns like they like talk to people and hopefully like lower lower those statistics or like eventually kind of stop those statistics in the sense of a lot of people that are like commit suicide and stuff like that is through the sense of like they just feel like there's no one there to talk to they want they feel like they're a burden on people and stuff like that um so yeah be a game teacher campaign is probably a really positive campaign in the sense of letting people know you're not on your own and there's people there to talk to yeah definitely that sounds like a, a brilliant campaign are you all right just to tell us a little bit about kind of your role and in, in what you do as part of that yeah so i shared my campaign through a video through so my mental health journey in the sense of it all came kind of from I probably struggled with like little things in the past and stuff like that but once I'd, I'd like done my knee and faced my ACL like I didn't play for well I didn't play for Newcastle for 17 months um and I like I done my knee in the November then I didn't have an operation until the March and stuff like that so my coping mechanism in life was to play football so whenever I was struggling with anything as soon as I step over the white line nothing else in the world mattered um having a ball at my feet it kind of just takes everything away and it lets me get my frustrations out and like let, lets me just feel content in myself. And obviously when that went, I didn't I didn't know how to cope. And COVID happened a week after my operation, there was no gyms open. I couldn't go and see people. I couldn't have a conversation. I couldn't watch football, like the Premier League and everything stopped. Um, so basically, um, Ashley from the Big Game Channel campaign got in touch with us to speak about my journey. Um, and just to share my story in the sense of how I cope with it. So my role now is to get my story, use it as a platform, get it out on social media and let people know that I see myself as quite a bit of a tough cookie and like I'm hard to break down and stuff like that. But when something big in your life happens, so for some, some people that might not be a big thing, but for me it was the biggest thing because it's, it's always been my coping mechanism. And when something like that happens, it's just knowing that there's, there's things out there and there's people out there that have gone through the same thing or people that have gone through situations that they can compare to that it might be very different, but they've got a comparison in the sense of like, they might know how you how they, how they you felt and this might be how they felt and this is how they've dealt with it and stuff like that. So it's basically just sharing my story, and letting people know that, that they're not on their own. And if anyone needs any help or someone to talk to, they can come to me or they can come to the foundation and we'll put things in place to help them. Oh, brilliant. I think that that's really important. And like you say, it's affected a lot of people, hasn't it? And I know a lot of young people, especially will be in the same position as yourself, whereas they'll go on the pitch or they'll go to training and they, and they switch off from anything else that's going on. And it it's a bit of you time, isn't it? And it's seeing other people, it's socialising, it's keeping fit as well. And I know a lot of people have struggled with that um over lockdown and like you say not even being able to go home and watch sport on the telly, like it has been a, it's had a big impact on everyone, hasn't it? Um, so with that then, what sort of support is available for young people? So if they did kind of reach out to you to, to sort of look for a bit of help, what sort of things could they, they sort of receive? Yeah, so anyone over the age of 16 can like get in touch with the foundation and they, all of our digital resources are on offer to them um, and they can join the campaign and we're like, they have workshops and stuff like that and they have lots of stuff on social media. So anyone over the age of 16 and get in touch and join that as well. All they have to do is really follow Newcastle United Foundation on all forms of social media and the big game, game changer campaign as well. And just reach out basically, um, reach out, start that conversation and the help will be there if they need it. Oh, amazing. I'm, I'm sure that'll be really useful for a lot of people listening today as well. 
Um, with that, then I know you were you sort of the first female and um, be a game changer ambassador. How did that sort of feel? How did that come about? Uh, yeah, like it's probably like something that I'll take the grave with. This is something to be really proud of. Um, and it's a bit of a shock in the sense, of, like I don't know, it's like oh yeah, that's me. <laughs> that's it. Like seeing myself on social media, like people coming up with us and saying, oh, I seen your video. Um, but it's although I'm really proud of it, I'm more in the sense of if it makes at least one person come forward that's that's what I'll take with this more than anything in the sense of like me sharing my story can help other people come forward and as long as it, it helps people that's something I'll always be proud of um so yeah something to be really proud of and like it's an amazing opportunity as well and it mental health is something that's really close to my heart it's something that I do at work as well um, and I'm surrounded with it all the time so helping people is something that I really want to do Oh, brilliant. That sort of leads us well on to the next question then. Well, I was going to ask, ask kind of what your role is at Sunderland Uni and I know you are invol involved in a lot of sort of mental health support um, at the university as well. Are you right just to kind of talk us through that a bit? Yeah, of course. So I'm a sport development officer at Sunderland University. So there's three of us that have that role and we all work on like different types of projects. So mine's basically participation sports. So people that don't really want to play competitively, but would still like to play sport. Um, I run National League, so we've got some of the teams in the highest level in the country that play like Super League volleyball and stuff like that, so I run that. And then the other side of it is I'm the mental health trainer within sport, so basically all of our clubs, all our sports teams and any students that want to learn about mental health, I do train the trainer programme with them, so they'll come in, they'll do a workshop with us, um, and we go around like how to help your teammate, how to look after your mate, how to spot certain things um and we just we just do training and workshops and open people's mind on what mental health is and what mental well-being is and how different they can be just because someone has like a poor mental well-being doesn't mean that they actually have poor mental health um and how like they can help people basically um I and mean, we've done a lot of training during covid as well because obviously working from home um we weren't on campus with students and stuff like that and we had so many students that were still living in halls so we opened up that training to Although I normally only do it with sports students, we just opened up to the whole university in the sense of everybody needs that help. Um, and especially during COVID and the time of, like we'd when it was Blue Tuesday and stuff like that, Blue Monday, we'd done like have a brew with Brooke. So like, I love having a brew. So it was just like, just to have a conversation. And just to start those conversations as well. Like, I think the hard thing is a lot of people can seem interested, like are interested and be like, oh yeah, like I'd like to know more about that. Or I'd like to learn about it or, actually I face some of those problems and I don't really know how to, how to deal with them but it's not, not like I'm embarrassed they just don't know how to have a conversation about it and they don't know how to step forward about it so basically because I love to talk I start that conversation for them and like once you start just having that general kind of conversation with people they start opening up about things that they didn't even realize they wanted to speak about and without knowing it like they've opened all of these boxes they're having all of these different conversations with different people and the from by the end of it they feel so much better from it yeah absolutely I think it's like you say it's hard to start that conversation isn't it and sometimes you need a bit prompted um but once you, you kind of go and it's like anything isn't it once you start talking about it it feels better um just sharing it with somebody else so yeah. are there things that you've continued then I know you said you've set up a few programs sort of through lockdown like brew with brook have you continued those or has that kind of gone back to to sort of where we were I guess before lockdown and changed slightly um, no, like they're still continuing in the sense of like they can always like come to, come to me. So basically, what happens within the teams is so they, they'll come in like committee members. So we normally have like three people out of each club will come in and um, we'll have a conversation with them. I'll deliver the workshop with them. And like I'm kind of like the background support in the sense of once they've had all that training and their, their players and stuff like that, their friends will go to them. And if it's anything that they can't deal with or they're unsure about, they'll then come to me. Mm -hmm. um, but we've started doing, I now do like wellbeing walks and stuff like that, where we've got students that, for example, we went for a walk last week and we went through like Beamish Woods and down the valley and stuff like that. And I had students that had never actually left Sunderland since October. Like, so going out and like seeing different things was like a massive thing for them. And like a lot of them are international students as well. So as much as I'm not doing, like I try not to do, zoom calls and teams calls as much now because we can go outside and have that conversation and as much as zoom and teams is great and stuff like that like for our students like now that i can go out and go and see them i think a face-to-face -face conversation is so much better in the sense of like just being through a computer screen because 
then it like it just you don't have that awkwardness like you're out you can have a coffee like and you can just talk about the things that are around you never mind just like having a conversation of like oh well how are you feeling today like I think having a general conversation is one of the easiest things than like a a forced conversation of like oh you're going on this call to have this chat about this whereas if you go and you can do something with each other it's so much easier so as much as like we're still doing like brew with brook and stuff like that it's we're also now doing like our well-being walks and stuff like that so we can see students properly oh that's great I think there's almost been a lot of sort of good that's came from it as well hasn't there and you, you've kind of developed like new ways of um supporting people which is great do you have like any success stories or anything that you could share with us or I know obviously it'd be very confidential you couldn't say specifics but anything just in general sort of advice that you've given people or any support and you've kind of seen them improve um yeah like in the sense of I've had like students that have come to me that have been at the lowest of lows and don't really know how they can go forward from things and they don't really know many people um and so we've like started these things where so we have like adventure programs where they can go paddle boarding and jumping like so we, we do like cold water therapy where they jump off the pier into the sea and stuff like that so that's like a big thing and um we've had like a lot of students come back to us in the sense of they didn't really have any friends and they didn't really have anyone to speak to and that's one of the biggest things when people come to university as well as they feel quite lonely especially if they've, they've traveled from somewhere and I think like it's really hard when you get to a certain age to make new friends I think when you're younger it's easy you just speak to anyone like when you're in school you go and play and stuff like that and if you're in college like around your, your normal hometown like you know people but I, I think especially with university students struggle in the sense of coming over to somewhere where they've never been before to make that like make have a conversation and make friends so from that we've had like a lot of students that have made like great friends like this morning I went on my emails from a walk last week and I've had a student send us like 18 different photos videos like saying it's like the most amazing thing they've ever done and they're oh, so happy cool. and they're so grateful and thankful and it's like something like all we've done was take them for a walk do you know what I mean but they've made like five new friends from that and two weeks ago they were telling us how they just wanted to go back home and they weren't very happy and they felt really lonely and really sad and they just couldn't couldn't deal with being on their own anymore and now they're like a different person and it's just simply from like booking a bus come on we're going to go for a walk social distance walk have a bit of a conversation for a few hours the sun's out and they feel like a different person so mm. although it's not like an amazing success story like that little thing of the sense of the feel happy having their self like they're grateful for something they're glad to be here like that's a big thing for me yeah definitely oh that sounds great it is the little things isn't it sometimes just getting out and, and sort of seeing people now we definitely took that for granted before um but that that's really good to hear um just on that note do you have any advice so a lot of the students who are young people who will be listening at the minute might be around sort of 15 16 kind of deciding what they want to do after year 11 and like you say, kind of taking that leap to maybe a new college or a, a new sixth form and things can be quite daunting when they maybe don't any, know anyone else who's going or anyone in the area. Do you have any tips for that? Um, anyone who's kind of a bit nervous about the next steps? Yeah, um, probably like I was that kind. I was that person when I was leaving school. So when I left school, I went to a college in Gateshead, and which was like took us an hour and a half to get there on a bus on a morning and stuff like that um, and all my friends stayed at sixth form so that was like quite a daunting thing for me but it's probably one of the best things I've ever done in the sense of I met loads of new different people and I went because I wanted to play football and I'm probably in the, the position that I'm in now from taking that step so I think like even if you, it's a daunting step and you're unsure on it but there's something in your back of your mind there's something in your heart that's telling you to do it that that's there for a reason so follow it like follow it and trust yourself trust the process and even if you're there and you're still unsure on it just have a conversation with someone like go and speak to someone about it if there's something that you're interested in take yourself out of that comfort zone because I think if you take yourself out of your comfort zone you never know what's going to happen and you never know what door's going to open and what opportunities you're going to be faced with whereas like if you keep yourself back and in the background and you're unsure on it you're never going to like there's so many things out there for you to do so just take that step like that step is the simplest thing it might seem like the hardest but once you take that step you'll have taken 10 before you know it yeah definitely I think that's some brilliant advice I know a lot of people especially this year with having not been able to go and visit campuses and and actually have that face-to-face -face conversation about what they're going to do next it's even more daunting than ever isn't it kind of choose where you're going to go without even seeing oh, absolutely yeah definitely like and it is hard and 
it'll probably be hard for a couple of years like in the sense of because you've we've kind of lost a year of a life and that's like especially for people ages 15 16 like that's a big time in your life you've had your GCSEs and stuff like that it's like a big grown year for you to become the person that you want to be and it's a big step in your life um but it's not the only step in life and I'm 28 and yeah I've got a job and I know what I'm doing but that's not to say in two years time I might want to go and do something completely different in life like that happens so although even if you take a step you're like do you know what it is this isn't for me it's not the end of the world because your life isn't over and there's still so many years ahead of you and so many different opportunities where you can make that decision and change it like it doesn't matter what decision you make now that's not the decision that's going to impact you for the rest of your life definitely oh that that's again some brilliant advice and um, just one last thing I was going to kind of ask just from picking up what you mentioned earlier I know when you said you were in college you kind of struggled with the the lifestyle as well as kind of your workload and playing as well and I know a lot of young people and the students that we have play um sport whether it's football rugby lots of different sports with us at quite a high standard who I imagine probably go through similar struggles in terms of do they want to just go out with their friends and you know socialize or by training that sort of thing do you have any tips for anyone who's kind of going through what you did in terms of prioritizing if it's football you want to focus on or or not um yeah so like in the sense of if I look back now I kind of wish I did things differently in college because I probably went more for the lifestyle if once I like see my friends and stuff like that I would like and I know like being in college it opens so many different opportunities especially within sport like you can get scholarships to America if you if, if sports definitely something you want to do like your lifestyle is always going to be there like focus on what you want to get out of something and if sports is what you love and sports is the route that you want to go down work hard like work hard do your work get your training done because at the end of the day you've got so many years to have that lifestyle and although I had a great time and we like won our cups we went like two years unbeaten and stuff like that I know there's so many opportunities that I missed out on just in the sense of like I kind of done things half-heartedly but if I could go back now and I see the opportunities that other people's had like, like although I'm in a great position with football now I probably could have been in this position a long time ago and I probably wouldn't have kind of fallen out of love with it because I would have been so much more dedicated with it um so yeah I think one advice I, if you're going to go and play sport and it's something that you love and something that you want to do make sure you stay with it and you follow it through excellent oh thank you very much for that it's been honestly great to speak to you and I think that'll be really useful for all young people and, and students who are listening and like on the event today um I know you've discussed lots of different sort of challenges you've faced and, and kind of how you've got to where, where you are today it's been a, a really like brilliant journey to hear about so thank you very much for joining us Brooke um thanks and hopefully everyone who's listening has um enjoyed that if you've got any questions or anything obviously do feel free to get in touch um throughout the event and we're more than happy to help but hopefully you're all having a great day and thank you very much for listening